Um, today is going to be a fairly short stream. Worlds is in a few hours. Uh, I wasn't going to stream at all until much, much later in the day, but someone asked, and I was already playing. Oh, we're currently 1-0. We beat Blue Black Control Round 1, but uh, so I figured I'd fire it up since there was a request for it. Um, I had planned on just chilling uh, in Skype and jamming the music with some friends, but whatever. If I'm going to play, I might as well stream. Um... Again, I want to apologize for anybody who's moderately regular, as this week's going to have a very odd schedule due to League of Legends Worlds, then uh, the Magic Worlds. I'm, I'm kind of like one of those people who just love to watch coverage, so it affects my sleeping and everything. But anyway, so we're back today with this build. Uh, we tried farming markets yesterday. I really didn't like them. I liked Gideon's much more than farming markets, so we've brought the Gideon's back in. We've still shaved on this one meltdown, which feels fine. It was an idea copied from Jim Davis. We added the fourth approach because when we played three approaches, it just felt terrible. Yes, you can win with three approaches, but like it feels like the games are much harder and that I've lost several games just because I couldn't draw an approach on time recently. I'm still not exactly sure what to do with these ops. In the pre Ixalan builds, it was three hieroglyphic illuminations, and I'm not actually sure if opt or hieroglyphic illuminations better. I'm tending to think opt might be slightly better for it plays better with our three and two mana spells, um, whereas on the opt. We're going to try to hold it for the draw two more often than not, and I don't actually think I need to draw two more often than not. I think the card selection and the scrying is better, but that's why I've kind of wafered between zero and four copies on the opt. But today we're back to three, and we're going to try that. The sideboard has felt great. Um, there's nothing I really want to change in the sideboard. Um, at some point, I might tool the sideboard better to beat the teamer decks, because now that the teamer decks are running... All not the teamer decks, but the energy decks in general. They're all running like multiple copies of Scarab God, and then like they're sideboarding in anywhere between four and eight counter spells, or like four counter spells, or three counter spells, and like three or four duresses. Uh, with they're playing that build, but uh, the Scarab Gods in general make the Trenchal Gear Hulks and the Regal Caracals coming in of the sideboard a little iffy. Um, they've been costing me lots and lots of games. So I might need to try to find a better way to beat them, whereas previously that was just a buy because they didn't have the Scarab Gods as often and you just didn't care if your creatures died and the creatures bought you so much time. But those decks have changed and we're going to have to adapt to it. I'm going to have to put some thought into how to adapt to it because I'm not actually sure how to best adapt to it. Um, I thought about Ixalan's Binding. Ixalan's Binding... That might not even be how you pronounce the card. Seems like it could be pretty relevant versus Scarab God and maybe even Hazard or Chandra, which are like, for the most part, the only cards that you care that resolve versus you. Hey, thank you, Eric, for the host. Appreciate it, man. I uh, hope your tokens testing went well today. I was watching VSL, so unfortunately I didn't get to tune in very much, but... Hope it went great. I love the look of the deck. Probably going to play it at some point. It's just right up my alley of what I enjoy. I played this guy yesterday, I believe. don't remember what he was playing. But just because we played him yesterday doesn't mean he's on the same deck. This hand's slightly landlocked, but it's got, you know, we got two draw steps to find the land. We can cycle worst case scenario, and we have a little bit of interaction if they're like a red deck. Um, I don't feel like we're favored versus the red decks in game one anyway, so not that big of a deal that we don't have much interaction for the red decks. That was a great draw. Hey, Sean and Corey, and uh, how you guys doing today? So game one versus these decks feel pretty decent, but at some point they're going to start putting in like spell pierces probably, and then that's going to make it a lot, lot harder. 
think I'd rather hold up Supreme Wells than resolve Gideon because Bristling Hydra is such a threat. We counterspell that too. Uh, it replaces itself, so it feels like it's a pretty fine thing to counter. Like how two people are chatting and my thing tells me only one person's watching. That's like just really weird. Uh, pretty well putting anything in a graveyard. It's just not a stone land right here. Uh, well, we're not happy about this, are we? So he's going to get to resolve whatever he wants, but we have to find the land. We're just not going to win games where we don't play lands. One of our approaches are on the bottom, but that's not that big of a deal. Hey, local. What's up, man? You guys all playing this this beautiful, beautiful Saturday or Friday? Yeah, Friday. That's what it is. Friday is when magic happens. Put an approach into the graveyard? Wow, do we really want to get rid of a second approach this early? Not really, but... Um, feels like we don't really have an option there. I really want the land, so we're going to go ahead and send this away. We have an effort meltdown for this thing. Have an effort meltdown. Have two if we draw a land. And again, still looking for the land. Uh, doesn't seem like Modo wants to give us lands. That's fine. So two of our approaches are already down. Can actually get to the second approach pretty quick when this search for Ascantha flips, which it does flip next turn, which is wonderful. So, that Long Tusk Cub's still going to be active, but... Kind of interesting whether he'll go all in on it or not, because some people play around Farm Market. Yeah, so opponent's not worried about Farm Market whatsoever. Well, I believe we'll just throw the Meltdown on this then. And take six, which is unfortunate. Hopefully he doesn't have a Bristling Hydra to follow this up. Um, the reason I chose that one is because the Gideon can come down and control this. Whereas if I just prevented the extra two damage... Ooh, wow, that's kind of an interesting card. Do we want that? Probably not. So we'll get us a land here. If he has negate main deck or SOL. If he has blossoming de defense main deck or SOL. Um, we're going to avoid playing this search for Ascanta so that we can hold up an effort meltdown to protect Gideon from Glorybringer if he draws it. That's a pretty good one as well. What cards do you need? I might be able to loan them to you. So we'll go ahead and put this one on this. Um, it's fine to control that, I believe. One beautiful thing about this is like it's scrying type ability every turn. I realize it's not actually scry, it's put a card on the bottom or whatever, but like that's still like a very, very relevant thing. Alright. So opponents wanting to do this hard fight versus the cub, which I mean with the cub. Alright, well, I mean, keep in mind that my mom leaves around 5 a.m. Friday, so if you guys are going to need to borrow things, you're going to need to get the order in pretty early. Uh, so he's probably going to reset his other Long Tusk Cub, I guess? If you're fine with that? That's kind of odd. That 
That's probably the better play. Yeah, so we're going to look for a Fumigate or an Approach. Probably would rather hit the Fumigate first. Well, that's not either of those things. Uh, you never know with me. I'm elusive, man. Do we put that in the graveyard? Huh? Don't feel like we need it, really. Alright, fine. I'll put it in the graveyard. Wonderful. Well, since he's hell bent, let's start attacking, I guess. We're still protected from the glory bringer. Scarab God's like the only super scary card. It's the second opponent recently that we've saw have that. Um, always no. So we don't have enough mana to do this and cast our thing, so I think it's fine just to pass the turn. Alright, so opponent's conceded. Well, this, this kind of makes things a little more interesting. Um, this really hurts our sideboard plan of our cats. He probably doesn't have more than one or two in the deck, though. So going into the sideboard, the Jace's Defeat can get Will of Virtuoso, Scarab Gods, Negates, uh, Spell Pierces if they have them, Hostage Takers, Rogue Refiners. So like practically everything in the deck that's scary except for Long Tusk Cub and Bristling Hydra and Chandra. So like half the cards in the deck, I guess. Um, the Torrential Gear Hulk's kind of interesting. Like the Torrential Gear Hulk's actually very good in this match. But if I can't deal with a Scarab God, it's a huge liability. Grixis Amulet does seem kind of cool. I think it would be a hard match for this deck. Um, the Gideon seem very good here. The Sensors seem very good here. I don't, I don't actually think it's a bad deck. I think it's fine. Well, normally, I think I like the cats. The cats just block and give you a lot of time. Even if they buy it back, it gives you like several turns to try to draw a fumigate. Um, we're gonna shave a couple of supreme wills and all of the ops. I think on the draw, we might bring ops back in on the play. We're gonna bring in one little cheeky negate, which probably actually isn't worth it. But yeah, negate's probably just not worth it. We've got one. If we wanted to bring another negate in in this match, we should have like a second Jace's Defeat in the sideboard because Jace's Defeat's better than negate. Uh, I don't like sideboarding to ops out, but it doesn't seem to me like any of our cards are worse than ops. And I would sideboard out Hieroglyphic Illumination in this match as well, so it's like kind of similar because that's the card they're replacing. Um, well, we have a Sensor and we have a Supreme Will, so... Have the cards we need provided he doesn't have Long Tusk Cub. If he does have Long Tusk Cub, we're going to have to find an, another answer somewhere. We're just not cycling this sensor. We're hoping it's Servant and not Long Tusk Cub, or we're hoping it's just Pass. I'm pretty sure I have several of those. Extra. That's a little unfortunate. Still not cycling the sensor this turn. 
Um, if he doesn't have a land, he can still hit some relevant things next turn. We'll certainly counterspell that. The Farmer Marcus yesterday did not feel good at all. We've already switched them back to Gideon's. So we're on a pretty fast clock, and he still has a lot of cards in his hand. He's kind of missing a land drop, though. I guess we'll cycle a sensor. Um, today's list is basically we've added Gideon's over to Farmer Markets. We brought back into Fourth Approach. Oh, wow. So they had three Rogue Refiners. That's what I consider their best card in the match. They have a negate already, we're SOL, because he'd be attacking for 5 this turn and 8 next turn, so a negate or a spell pierce is lethal and there's nothing we can do about it, except for play cats. Like, we don't even have to play into it, we'll just probably slam a cat here. Oh wow, well he tapped out. Since he tapped out, we'll probably play a fumigate. Yeah, probably just play a fumigate then. If he hadn't tapped out, we would have slammed a cat, and we'd have went meow meow, and hoped it was good enough. He still has four cards in hand, though, where he drew double Rogue Refiner. Over two Supreme Wills. I just the thing is, I just don't think I want targeted removal. The targeted removals felt so very bad. Champion of Wits, that's interesting. You don't see that every day. Like that's one of the places it was worse for me. Like, versus the red decks and stuff, like, our opponents just kept attacking us with gods and stuff, and, like, the card didn't do much. Nice. So play this, and he'll probably have one removal spell. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, like, the, the, the fast decks are definitely our weakest problem, but I actually don't know if they're fixable. There's the Scarab God, so now we kind of need to hit a... And I'd, hit, I'd hit F6 there, so that's my bad. Um, pressing F6 there was obviously very, 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 very bad. Um, it ended up not mattering, probably, but like it was still very, very bad. Yeah, it ended up not mattering because we didn't hit the cast out anyway, but it was still a pretty large play mistake. I was just trying to get the game over with while I was talking. So that's kind of a play mistake, kind of a client error, or kind of an error with the client rather, not a client error. They're two different things. Luckily, uh, we did hit the cast out, so he's not going to get too much of an advantage. We have the Jace's defeat to protect the cast out. Especially if he taps out this turn. Yeah, well. Turns out that our play mistake turned out being useful. So he can hit us for five if he wants. I guess he didn't want to. I wouldn't have wanted to either, but... Hey, what? Why is it telling me I need blue mana? Don't need that. Cast. Use this. This, this, and this. Moto, Moto's acting aloof right now. Thank you, Moto.
that's fine. We'll just go ahead and take the six. Hopefully we'll get to play a cat in game four. Yeah, the soul time match isn't that bad. Like, it's not a match you really want to play versus, but, like, it's not that bad. If they draw an early Scarab God, it can be bad, but they play, like, one main. Some play one more side, which helps a lot. They don't really have anything else in their deck you care about. I'm not going to attack because he can just block with a champion of wits, and I don't want to let him black do card stuff. We do have the settled wreckage now, which is pretty nice. It's another champion of wits. Fine. With the double approach, I think it'll be kind of hard to lose this game from here. I don't think Rob owns the hostage takers, remember? He passed you one in draft. Pretty much keeping nothing but lands. I want to be able for when we cast a second approach to have the Jace's defeat to follow it up. There we go. There's our lands. <laughs> Could just play the cat and try to win by attacking now. We take one turn off, our opponent can do practically anything he wants. We don't have to worry about the big Chandra sweeping the board. And next turn, we have another approach with a Jace's Defeat back up. So he needs a pretty good card here. That's not a pretty good card. That doesn't do it. Now he's only got one card in his hand. Go ahead and block this time. Uh, I cut one opt in today's build. I think the exclamation mark deck list command works. And we have Jace's Defeat if he has the counterspell, but he's not played this game like he has a counterspell. And that's 2 0. Up to 5 and 2 versus Teamer. Oh, well, he didn't hit it. I'm still not sure about the ops exactly. Um, Pre-Ixalan, we used to play, in the ops slot, we used to play just three Hieroglyphic Illumination, which is obviously better in the late game, and it's kind of like a split card. It's kind of like one side of the split cards pay one mana, draw one card. The other side of the split cards pay four mana, draw two cards. Um... It actually may just be better than Opt. We're not sure, but we're still testing Opt. But, like, I feel like in this deck, you're often, like, tapping Glimmers or Supreme Wheels or Gideons. You're just, like, often not exceptionally mana efficient. And that the Scry is going to be more valuable than the drawing the card in the late game. The Scry in the early game feels to me like it's more valuable than the extra card late game. I don't really know. That's something that we're going to have to determine with more testing. And then we're going to have to determine whether we want between 0 and 4 copies of Opt and between 0 and 3 copies of Illumination. But anyway, so Sam will... I recognize this guy's name as well. I don't actually know what he plays, but I recognize him. His hand's not great, but it's above a keep. Like, we can still Glimmer on turn 4. Um, if he's not playing mono red, this effort meltdown's generally good on turn three post. Well, he's playing mono red, so that's obviously the worst case scenario for us. And we'll go ahead and get the sensor online, which puts the glimmer further away. Yeah, I'm, I'm not positive that op's good. Like, op is something that is on the chopping block. Okay, he's not playing mono red, he's playing. Mardu something. 
Right, we're going to go ahead and take the one point of damage here. We're not going to cast the Ephraim Meltdown because if he has Carl Zev or Scrap Heap Scrounger uh, post combat, that's just more a much more brutal for us. And if he just um, if he just plays another one drop here, it would be kind of unfortunate. That's kind of interesting. Do I care about Heart of Kieran? Probably fine to get whatever value out of sensor that I can get. Yeah, I agree. We're going to have to do a lot more. Uh, I've only played this deck once off stream, so like basically all of my testing with this deck has been on stream. and uh, We've tried so many different things that we're like, 37 matches in right now so it's like hard to come to any definitive conclusions in just 37 matches but uh we're enjoying working on the deck and we're enjoying playing it Let's see what opponent has here scrap heap scrounger all right nice glad we saved this little meltdown Kind of an interesting addition to the Mardu deck. Kind of curious uh, how many untapped red sources that they have for turn one. So what's he got now? Uh, a good Gideon. Well, that's unfortunate. That's actually causes some problems because we're going to have to deal with that at some point. I guess we'll take this one. So this can attack, and we're going to have to deal with it at some point. I think, I think opponents set up pretty well this game. He's got like a three turn clock going on. He still has three cards in his hand. Um, opponent's playing well. He's attacking with a scrap heap, which is good because I could have had settled wreckage. It's good for him not to attack with the Gideon for the same reason. There's the emblem. This clock is very slow at the moment, though. There's ours Kanta, or as I like to call it, best card. This feels like the best card in our deck at all times. Oh, it seems to be flooding a little bit as well. Oh, he's having five mana? So I can't imagine a five mana spell that I'm not going to try to Supreme Will. I mean, I'll opt first. Oh, wow, he's just using that? Okay. So we'll start with this and see if we hit like another meltdown or something at the end. Um, to use Supreme Will or to use Opt? I think we'll use the Supreme Will. Look for a Fumigate. There's a second approach, but the second approach doesn't actually win. Does seem better than a Gideon, though. Does it seem better than Gideon? I 
Not really. Doesn't seem like it does much at all, does it? No, we'll still take it. So we can flip as Kanto with the opt. Certainly put that on the bottom. Supreme Will to the hand, and then we get a scry, island in the graveyard, and transform. Well, there's a cast out. Okay. I guess we just pass turn so that we can prevent the four damage from the Gideon. So there's a glory bringer. Let's we'll see if he attacks with this Gideon now. Did not attack with the Gideon. All right, so we're taking two down to nine. We're going back to 16 with our approach. Might have been a little early to even cast that. Two more mana. So another Fumigate probably locks up the game. He does have a glory bringer. We're in pretty good shape too, especially with the Gideon for next turn. <sighs> he only gets two more attack steps as the board currently stands. Obviously, things can change the board. So this would put us down to twelve. actually censor a Gideon if he played one post-combat. Probably not likely for him to do, but... Yeah, he's hellbent. So there's one scry. So we know it's six cards down, five cards after our draw step. So, five cards after our draw step. This is four, plus our card for the turn. So, three plus that still leaves us one, two, three, four, five, six. Not enough. Cascanth has been a very powerful card. I kind of regret not having more of them. All right, opponent, don't deal 12 damage. Just don't play another Gideon. That's what we're trying to dodge right now. Basically the other Gideon. Or another Gideon, not the other Gideon. All right, well, that doesn't do anything. So we know we win. He's hell-bent. Just go ahead and go get our approach. Save the time. That's not our approach, by the way. But he can see it. It's fine. This one's our approach. I just wanted to make sure my math was right. That's why I went ahead and drew. Uh, I guess it's kind of slow-rowing opponent in a way, but I just wanted to double-check my math. That's, that's often 
it's amazing how often it happens that uh like I know the approach is the seventh card and I'm counting and then like the sixth card I draw an approach, I'm like, well did I screw up my math? Did I forget something or is it actually there? <laughs> so I always like looking at the next card to see if I'm an idiot or not. I don't think so. I almost want four. I honestly wouldn't be object I honestly wouldn't object to just playing four. Alright, so Mardu Vehicles. It's been a hot minute since I played Mardu Vehicles. But the old Mardu Vehicles were full of Planeswalkers, full of relevant uh, vehicles, and had some like discard spells and some card draw spells. He had So Scour Mage, so I'm assuming he's a little lower to the ground than that. If he's a little lower to the ground than that on average, then Regal Caracol is probably better, when normally I would think Negate's better. Uh, a four deal of the council's fine versus Glorybringer, but probably not great versus his deck overall. Um, he is slow enough that Search for Ascanta feels like it's still a pretty relevant card, but it may be too slow on the draw. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably too slow on the draw. So if it's too slow on the draw... Bring in the cast. The one thing I did like about Farm with Market was how good it was with Torrential Gear Hulk. However, most of the matches that I was bringing Gear Hulk in, I was taking Farm and Market out. So like, that was kind of odd in that way, in that manner. Uh, I think we're gonna cut one of these and one of these as well. I think we can actually win with our creatures, so I don't think we have to try to win with the approaches. And he could be on Lost Legacies anyway. I don't think I played Mardu Vehicles this season, have I? Let me check my manor over here. Played Mardu Tokens. That's kind of close. All right, zero, zero Mardu Vehicles. Mardu Vehicles. All right, so this hand. This hand doesn't seem good enough, even though we have a ton of scribes. This hand seems worse, but it's kind of better because we get to turn one. I think we'll mulligan it too. All right, well, this hand was the best hand we saw, so... Go ahead and snap keep it. Yeah, so they have their best turn one play. So this game looks like it's going to be a different animal. Yep, looks like they have their good draw, so we have to try to hit. Like an effort meltdown or something. This is a game that Pharma Market would be good in, but like opponent's deck isn't a very common deck, so So if he has a three powered follow up here, he can kill us long before we get to where we want to go. Snap bottom. Kind of just looking for meltdowns. Yep. These are the plays that are hard to beat from aggro decks when they're on the play and they have a 1 drop, 2 drop, turn 3 play. Especially if they like to untap and have a turn 4 play as well. But like, clearly farm to market is better in this spot, but like, Gideon was better last game by a lot, so. Or last match by a lot, so. It's like hard to tell which one's actually better. I feel like Gideon's better overall. It's like kind of this bad little removal spell that's not very good though. So we're all the way down to nine. We kind of like have to top deck a land and a settle to wreckage, and guess what? We can't top deck them both. So if he doesn't have a follow up here and he doesn't have a follow up next turn, maybe we can hit runner runner? No, we didn't even hit the first runner, so. 
All right, gamble time. Just have to hope opponent doesn't have any more creatures. If he does, we're dead. Planeswalker kills us as well. That kills us as well. But he had a glory bringer too. But yeah, it all killed us. Yep, this into this into this is really difficult. Alright, we'll concede. Alright, so did we learn anything from the board? Not really. He just played a bunch of creatures. He didn't play anything but creatures. The gate wouldn't be that good. It was only good on one turn total. Forty didn't seem that good. Uh, search for Ascanta still seems kind of slow. We're probably needing to cast one of these seven spells on turn two. If we don't have one of these seven spells, we're probably needing to cycle something. Um. Okay, this hand's much better while still not being very good. He kept awfully fast there. We do have some interaction early though. Like I don't think we get ran over this game on turn five or whatever. Uh, do we want this land? I'm gonna say no. Probably gonna hit lands anyway. Just in case we need to cycle, though I don't think we'll be cycling this turn. I don't think we'll cycle to cast out at all. We'll probably be saving the cast out to try to hit like a part of Kieran or something. Part of Kieran, a Gideon, just something. Supreme Will's a wonderful follow up here. It hasn't shown us white mana yet. We're certainly going to counterspell that. That card does a bundle of damage. And we're hoping to be able to cast Glimmer next turn. So like we don't have to worry about like fighting over whatever he plays next turn. Uh, I, don't, I don't really want Maze of If at all. It's too slow to activate. Uh, it's just too bad in too many matches. And making them untap one attacker generally wouldn't win a game I don't think. It's not terrible but like. I don't know. Feel like I feel like we rarely just lose to like one little thing beating us down. I guess that's wrong. We could have duress. So we'll pop this little dude out. Neither of those are lands, so they're both going to the bottom. And well, we hit a land. All right, well, that's kind of interesting. I wasn't going to play the cat because of Glorybringer, but now I'm going to easily play the cat because we also have the other cat. So, like, even if he kills the cat and does four damage to us or whatever, five damage to us with the Souls Card Mage, we can play the second cat and get a lifelink attack back in uh, while putting two more things on the board and having cast out to stop the next or to stop his glory bringer on the opposing turn. So he'd like need he needs a removal for two cats. Which it looks like he may have. Rip. That was pretty good for him. Yep, that was very good for him. I guess to attack us down to eight. 
He has a follow up land here. Is that a real problem? Well, we did not hit a follow up land, which is also a real problem. So we break even on laugh on these turns. While we committed a bunch to the board. Well, we don't care about that too much. Kind of interesting. Just another fumigate. Hmm. Could attack with all of our tutus. He trades one of them, but we gain six life. No, I think I'd rather play Glimmer. Hold up, cast out in case he has. No, no, I think I think gaining six life's fine. We're probably gonna have to fumigate this game at some point anyway, so I don't think I'm I don't think I'm mind trading gaining eight life here. For one cat. I think that's a positive trade for me overall. Could easily save the cat, but I'm not going to. I don't care what his life total is. Our game plan is to win if approach. And he could have an easy, he could draw like a removal spell for the cat, so that could be our last turn just to gain the 8 point life link. Pia, that's a pretty good one as well. So that starts to give him good attacks and good blocks. Let's see what he does with his things. Go ahead and take that this turn. I really want to glimmer more than anything. Pretty well just want lands. Could keep them both, but like nearly half of our decks are lands at this point, so I think the odds of us drawing another land over two turns is pretty high. That's kind of an interesting draw. If his hand's really bad, we might be able to get him with cats now. His hand would have to be pretty bad for us to even try that, though. Sure. I'm gonna cast out here to like shut the glory bringer down. Could I get the heart of cure and then just like could I just get the heart of cure and fumigate next turn. That seems fine as well. Like he's down to one card in his hand. Yeah, he's down to one card in his hand. We don't know if we're going to hit the land either, and we have four fumigates in a row, so. Seemed kind of fun. If 
we had the seventh land, I think I would have just got the glory bringer. Well, we missed the land. We'll go ahead and put ourselves back over 20. Well, that was a good draw, I guess. Does let him attack with the harvester if he wants. Still not hit that land. Alright. Looking for an untapped land here? So now we have a cast out that we can use on the Gideon. And then we can play an approach the following turn. Actually kind of messed up there. Uh, I should have did this during his attack step so he wouldn't have got a Gideon trigger this turn. That could come into play if he has his own cast outs. So that was a player. It was also a player for him not to use it during his upkeep. So, I mean, it equals out. And if he's got a cast out, we'll see that my player cost me. It's not looking like it did, but yeah, that was that was a pretty big mistake to me for me. Right, so update the things. We're now at thirty nine and eight, or thirty and eight. Sorry, not thirty nine and eight. I was deleting the twenty nine. Hey, uh, Joe Zero, what's up, man? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we've 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 uh. We've tossed it up a lot since Ixalan. This is only the seventh stream of this deck. We've also uh, streamed a couple leagues with some black-white token deck we were tuning, but then we finally decided it was just too hard to beat uh, Mono Red and kind of gave up on working on it, though I probably will go back to it at some point. Um, we streamed some Red Green Pummler, and we streamed some Sultai Energy, um, which I wasn't a big fan of the Sultai Energy list. I feel like the deck was off by probably six cards. At some point, we'll probably go back and tune on it a little as well. I believe my Scarab Gods are loaned out at the moment, though. So, uh, I was already in a league with this deck. This is the deck that uh, I try to play You know, when I'm not on stream in competitive leagues to try to earn some treasure chests or whatever. And a friend asked me, he says, since you're playing, just go ahead and go live. So, I went ahead and fired it up. Uh, we're we're working on it. Um, I'm still not happy with all the cards. Basically, the ops is the thing that I'm not the most sure about. Uh, this hand's fine. It's not great. It's kind of slow, but like you can afford to have slower hands versus everything that's not mono red. And we're not a favorite versus mono red either. Or anyway, so. Um. The Marionette Master Combo deck's pretty sweet, except for the fact that I just don't think it needs the Marionettes to win. It's not a bonus stream. This is a Wednesday stream. This counts for Wednesday. But anyway, um, 
as I was saying, like, like I that's how we started off our black white token deck. It was a marionette combo deck, and like the marionette and the combo just wasn't doing anything. And we slowly but surely like shaved some, shaved some, shaved some, and then ended up just playing cats. And the cats worked out better overall. That's kind of interesting. I have to see how much more aggressive our opponent's draw is. It looks like he's playing the uh, Megaphone-style black-red deck. Uh, so he gets another card next turn. We can't really do anything about it. That's whatever. We'll prevent some damage this turn, at least. That's not a land. All right. I think we're going to look for a land like this. Yeah, well, we hit one. We were hoping to hit a blue one so we could also use the opt, but we'll take whatever we can get. So he's going to get to do a whole lot of damage to us. And if he has a Hazard, this game's going to be very hard. If he doesn't draw a Hazard, I assume this game's going to be a bit of a joke. That's a Hazard. Luckily that he drew extra cards and it makes it a little harder for the Hazard to turn on, but... I mean, he's still going to get to turn it on pretty fast. His deck does what his deck does. Really need to find a cast out. It's going to take like a million damage next turn. Right, well, I guess we'll start with this. It's kind of a free row to start with the opt. Gideon. Gideon does things. Doesn't do a lot of things, but it does things. It's kind of interesting. I think we need a cast out to win, but... We just play Gideon and take it up on Scrap Heap Scrounger. So he's drawing a fourth card for his turn. A land would put him at three cards... A uh, hazard activation would put him at two cards. So if he has any burn spell or any three mana spell, that he'd be able to turn on the hazard. So basically, he can just turn on the hazard, and there's nothing I can do about it. I guess the best way to play around the hazard is. I guess I could fumigate this turn, go up to 17, and make him have to spend either his mana on getting this back or his mana on playing a spell. How do we win the game if we do that, though? This is, gives us the least chance of getting hit by the hazard next turn, I think. We can Glimmer for an untapped land, too, if we want. So he's got to get three cards out of his hand. It's pretty easy for him to do if he's got a burn spell. Not real easy for him to do if he doesn't. Oh, well, he just had two burn spells. Sure. But that works, too. So we're just dead? No out? Have no out. 5, 8, plus an activation's 10. Um, putting this on this, he just attacks for 3. Alright, so we have no out. I guess we could have played the Gideon last turn. But I don't know if that doesn't get us to a win either. 
We just can't beat these little aggro decks. They're very good versus us. Alright. Anyway, so versus these little aggro decks, we bring in all of these cards. Um, if we don't think they have a braid, we bring in these typically, but like, he probably has a braid, he probably has murder boat. So that makes these a little bit worse. Cards that aren't good. Uh, I find, I've found a Cantus too, or as Cantus too slow. I've found the Glimmers too slow. I found the Ops to be decent, but not great. Um, the real question is, do we want Torrential Gear Hulk? I don't think so, not without Farming Market. So what are we versus now? Red, Black, Aggro? Um, so we're currently 1-0 versus the deck, but like, it's obviously a hard match. Any deck with Hazard is a hard match to beat. Anybody else hopped for? Uh, I am I just totally not getting rid of a sensor. I, I would rather have a sensor than an opt. Like, an opt is always scry a card, draw a spell. This is at worst draw a card, at best counterspell a good spell. I think counterspelling a good spell is better than uh, scrying a card. Uh. I believe I'll keep this hand because we have a Scry to look for a white source and a Effer Meltdown if we miss on one turn, which gives us a little bit of extra turn. Worlds is starts on the 6th at 9.30 or 9 Eastern. League of Legends Worlds starts at like 3 a.m. tonight. That doesn't do it. Rip. I think the hand still keep. Like, we have some interaction. And we had two draw steps to hit a white source. If we hit a white source on this next turn, too, it won't be that terrible. So I think we're a favorite with three draw steps to hit a white source. And then some cards obviously gave us redraws. So we have a chance. Have a real decent chance if we draw like a Supreme Will for our next turn. Yep. Worlds is this weekend for MTG. The 6th through the 8th. I believe it's around 9.30ish in the morning. But don't quote me on that. Well that was kind of a perfect draw. We're going to take an additional 3 from this this turn to be able to stop whatever his 4 drop is. I'm actually willing to Supreme Will that as well. Willing just to Supreme Will anything he has here because I believe the cast out's useful enough. He still has four cards in his hand though, which is an issue. Another authority. Doesn't really do much. Probably going to be casting out this guy so he doesn't get to draw a card. While still taking a large amount of damage. How good would a 40 be if it was when either player played a card you got to gain a life? Or creature? That'd be kind of sick. He still has four cards in hand though and he missed a land drop which means his entire hand is just pure gas. And we're at just nine life, so if his hands even remotely gas, we're in pretty rough trouble. And we never got to play another spell anyway, so it didn't matter. It's the second time recently that I've drawn uh, like three authorities and it wasn't good enough to close. I think I had three authorities last night when my opponent mulliganed to three and still beat me. I'm, I'm very close to cutting the authorities from the deck and just willing to lose the mono red decks or the red black decks close enough to the mono red deck that it's the same thing but I think that I'm getting pretty close to just saying I'm willing to lose to these matches all the time so 
So if he even has a lightning strike, we're dead because of this trigger. Or he could lightning strike my face. Alright, well we were dead on board. I don't know if we are anymore or not. The opponent definitely just missed lethal. Go down to three. Does he have another? All right. Well. Eh, doesn't matter. Opponent does not get punished for his mistake. GG. And we move into the last round. Hopefully we'll uh, get this last little win, but we'll, we'll take the PD chest, even if we don't, and be fairly happy with it. Um, update the stats. Oh, if you guys like what you're watching, make sure you hit the follow button and click the links down below to my Twitter, where if you follow it, you'll see every time we go live and every deck list we play. And if you follow the link on over to the YouTube, you'll see all of our end streams. If you're watching from the YouTube, keep in mind that on every video in the description, there's a link to both my Twitter, my Twitch, and my deck list. Uh, this hand's slow, but it's a keep. The Fumigate is the most powerful card we have versus any of the energy decks, and they're just the most popular decks by a lot. Um, the hand itself is slow enough, though, that a Long Tusk Cub could potentially win the game before Fumigate ever comes down, or that we could be at a low enough life total that, uh, could be at a low enough life total that, like, a... I don't know what you call it, like a glory bringer if they were on that build could clean up the game. But we drew the best card for this situation. Which is pretty nice for us. Well, this thing still attacks through with that thing pretty easily. I, s I played this deck the other day five rounds and I never had that draw one time. Does a minor tilt. So we have to counterspell anything he plays that we can. So our life total is going to be low enough that a walking ballista or a scarab god might be able to salvage the game for him. Just anything that gains him energy might be able to as well. We're going to be at 10 after this turn. Oh, that was a kind of useful card. Alright, so what do we do now? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if he has Blossoming Defense, he can beat the Supreme Will. If he doesn't have Blossoming Defense, any energy thing, do we cast out now and potentially lose the energy, or do we try to save up the cast out? Probably try to save the cast out. But yeah, like I said, Long Tusk Cub's the one thing that can like beat us in these matches, or the one thing that can like steal a game.
All right, so we have an option. We can play to cast out and lose to Walking Ballista. Yeah, we'll just take the damage. Put that one on the bottom, this one on top. We may need it in a second. I don't know if I liked how I played that turn, but there were so many things that beat us if he just had Blossoming Defense. Like, literally any energy producer would beat us. Wow, he's got the main deck Spell Pierce. Alright, well, we died to the main deck Spell Pierce. That's great. I love losing the random one-ofs that are bad in most of the matches. But it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I believe these come in in this match, and I believe this actually comes in in this match as well. Uh, the Ascantas feel like they are fast enough here. He doesn't really have that many powerful cards, so the Supreme Wheels feel a little weaker here on average, too. So that means he would have had to spell Pierce on the last turn as well. Yeah, we've not been doing good versus these Sultai Energy decks, though when we look at them on paper, they look like they're very easy matches. Uh, this hand's a keep. It's really hard to beat anything that goes like Lone Tusk Cub into Winding Constrictor and you can't interact with it, though. But, like, that draw just doesn't happen that often. It doesn't happen very often at all. At least in my experience, it doesn't happen that often. We have best card and we have two interactive spells, so that's kind of good. And opponent has their best spell. Oh, great. I just don't get these draws when I play this deck. Yes, we'll put that in our graveyard. We're looking for a Fumigate. Could have Blossoming Defense there. He did not have Blossoming Defense there, so that's kind of nice. I think this card's good enough that I want to go ahead and get it off the table if I'm able to. If he's got a Blossoming Defense, that's just whatever really care if he has a blossoming defense he's not going to be able to kill my gideon next turn without like a lot of stuff so none of the cards in my hand seem like they particularly matter Gideon in our graveyard? Short. We have a Gideon in play. He attacked me, by the way, and not the Gideon. Does anybody else find that odd? That means, did he bring in Veraska's Contempt and he's just going to, like, kill this guy in a little bit? That could be a reasonable thing, I guess. Short. He wants to trade everything for the Gideon. I guess that's fine. Nope. He's going after me again. There's a the kitty cat. Put a glimmer in my graveyard? Sure. It flips the Ascanta. That's pretty much the only reason I'm doing it. They could have Scarab God or something, so...
See if he activates it in response. That'd be a sweet next level, by the way, if he just activated it in response. <laughs> what kind of next leveling would that be? He's just like, no, I'm going to do a four damage to you, Brohim. I've already hit F6, so I don't know why it's making me do that, but whatever. So save four points of life there. We still have a post-combat cat. So we pretty well just only have to worry about Scarab Gods the rest of this game. Scarab God could be a difficult card, but we do have Ascanta to help us look for answers to Scarab God. We can't just start attacking too. Can't forget the fact that we can always just start attacking now. Especially if you draw like another cat. There's two more cast outs in our deck if he does have the Scarab God. Scarab Gods are a one of and a two of in his decks usually, so it's like pretty hard for him to have them, but not impossible. My opponent had lots of things again. You get indestructible if I attack, right? So end of turn, 4-4. Four, four. Okay, yeah, it's indestructible. So we can attack and fumigate. Let's see what kind of blocks he makes. So he's down to two cards in hand after his draw step. Or right, one card in hand. Scarab God's the only thing we're super worried about here. Kind of sucks that Ascanta can't get creatures, but I guess that would be beyond broken. <laughs> Ascanta being able to get Torrential Gear Hulks, can you imagine that deck? I just noticed Sean said something a while ago that I ignored. Sorry, Sean. Three lands to the bottom. Settle the wreckage to the hand. He takes the damage. We'll ask Kanta to look for our other Gideon that's already in our graveyard. If not, we'll just do what we did. All right, so he found a potential answer. Another duress to get the settled wreckage. So we know he's hellbent now, so a cast out or a fumigate would win. Saw a lot of fumigates this game, might have saw them all. Two, three. No, we just saw three. All right, we'll take the one to try to look for the win then. So go ahead and put an approach on the bottom. There's a cat. There's another cat. Stop that thing from dealing damage. He's got enough energy that our dude couldn't be a thing anyway. We'll just play a bunch of cats and have a lot of lethal threats for the next turn. I doubt he has something that can deal with all of our threats in his deck, but there could be. Could be something I'm not thinking about. No. He scooped. Nothing that I wasn't thinking about, I guess. So he didn't see us go for the approach this game. He just milled an approach early. So let's look at what we see from him. 
just a standard green black player. He looks like he brought in duresses. He either A didn't draw his counter spells or B thought duresses are better than counter spells, which I highly disagree with. Um So sideboarding. If he didn't bring in a bunch of negates, that means the torrential gear hulks are actually insane. If he did bring in a bunch of negates, that means the gear hooks are pretty bad. Um, Supreme Will gets a little bit better on the play, or a little, it's a little bit better on the play than it is on the draw. So, like, I wouldn't mind taking the other two out of the deck for the torrential gear hooks, except we don't really have anything I want to bring in. I don't think I want to bring the Supreme Wheels back in. Um, I think we're just going to run it back how it is and hope that our draws are fairly similar. Though, I believe if he has another winding, if he has another Long Tusk Cub in the Winding Constrictor on 2 and 3, uh, being on the play, it's a lot more dangerous than it being on the draw. So, like, we probably wouldn't beat it. Hey, Flame Guts, what's up, man? We're in game 3 of round 5, and I believe we're going to have to mulligan. Have every card we want in our hand except for lands, and lands is what you want most versus a deck that has discard. We also don't even have an interactive spell until turn three, and we'd have to hit land land for that to happen with only one potential scry. So I think we'll go ahead and mulligan. Right, this hand's much better, though it's obviously still not very good. We're only one land away from being able to... Right, so he probably puts the Gideon in our graveyard. If he's got a second discard spell or a counter spell, he might get to fumigate. Gives us a little information on what his hand is. It's probably not more discard spells. What are you into today, Flame? You having a good one, bub? Yeah, go ahead and play this. We need to land anyway, even though it does give him a little bit of information. So, please don't have a Long Tusk Cub three games in a row. Sweet. It wasn't a Long Tusk Cub. Anytime it's not a Long Tusk Cub, we're happy. Yeah, you know, Search for Ascans is what I call a best card. Will literally censor any censorable play. Probably going to make us discard the censor. Or just go ahead and ship it then to try to hit the lands. Like, these cards are all pretty redundant. We don't care which one of these we discard. We just care about hitting lands over the next three draw steps. Not showing him the other land. We're going to have to fade Scarab God this game. Scarab God will do a lot of work if he has it. Eh, don't care too much about that one. It does replace itself, which is unfortunate. So I have a search for Ascanta here, which does a lot of stuff. Kind of interesting. If he's playing this spell into this, this means he almost assuredly has a spell pierce or a negate. Can't imagine that he would make that play without one of those two cards. Snap puts something into the graveyard, it's not a land. And hit a land that doesn't help us. Well, that was very unfortunate. Not hitting the fifth land uh, could be a game costing problem here. 10, 12, 15. Best card in the deck by a lot. Alright. So. What's the plan now? Meltdown to the graveyard? Snap, yes. Of 
Well, if he has a negate, we just die if we play the other one. So I guess we'll slam this one. This one can block the board cleanly if he has nothing else. While giving us a pretty high life total. Um, we still lose the Winding Constrictor this way, but we lose the Winding Constrictor if the Fumigate gets counterspelled as well. Snap block to gain some life, so we don't care about the Fumigate as much. See what opponent has for a follow-up. So that's probably a negate. Snap put island in the graveyard. Snap transform. There's an approach, which he'll negate if he has, I'd say. If he doesn't have a negate, it puts us back up to 14 life while we still have a blocker in play now. It gives us another chance to like try to draw a... This is a chance to try to draw like another cat or or like a Jace's defeat or something to like help this fumigate resolve. All right, so here's kind of an interesting dilemma. Um, so we're dead if we miss. So this is one, two. 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if he has Negate, we're just dead. And if he has Spell Pierce, we can beat Spell Pierce, but we think he has Negate. And I guess we'll play around the Spell Pierce then. Oh wow, he didn't have it. Maybe it's just Spell Pierce. Maybe all he had was Spell Pierce. Who knows? So he didn't have a thing that entire time? Wow. Yeah, so he didn't have a thing that entire time. Maybe it was just Spell Pierce this whole time. No, he just didn't have anything the whole time. That's kind of amazing. So oh, 31 and 9 is our current record. Uh, got us a little QP. I believe these QPs are kind of pointless because I don't think they count for this season. Or I think I think this season we have enough to play all the events we're going to can play the rest of the season anyway. So that's kind of interesting. He just didn't have a counterspell game 2 or 3 at all. I wonder if he's not bringing them in. It would be insane not to bring them in, right? So like maybe he's just draw, drew poorly two games in a row? I'm not actually sure. But as for a recap of today, we beat Sultai in some kind of interesting games. We lost to uh, the Megaphone Red Black Aggro, de or Aggro deck. We beat a Teamer deck. Teamer Energy with Scarab Gods. We beat a... It had Hostage Taker in the main deck. We beat a Sultai... Or sorry, not a Sultai, but we beat a Mardu Vehicles deck. And then we beat a blue-black control deck. Um, as for the changes, whoops, sorry. So as for the changes, sorry, the blue-black control was not on stream, by the way. I apologize for that. Uh, like I said, again, I didn't originally plan on streaming today, but I was playing anyway, and a friend talked me into it. But anyway, so, f so far for the changes we made today, we added the Gideons over the farmer market, and the Gideons felt great. Um, a viewer... Uh... Devin, yeah, De Devton, Devton, uh, suggested that we try Farmer Markets over a couple of Supreme Wheels. I'm kind of reluctant to do that, but that might be what we try with the next build anyway. Um, I still haven't made any conclusions on the Ops. The Ops feel great at times. They feel terrible at times. Um, just because they feel great doesn't mean they're needed. Some cards cannot be needed even if they are doing stuff. Um the sideboard still feels good, but I feel like we need a little bit better plan than just bringing in a bunch of cats versus these Sultai decks of Scarab Gods and versus these four-color energy decks of Scarab Gods. But overall, it felt reasonable, but not perfect. Um, I do feel like we're learning some stuff with the deck, though. We're learning to play it a little bit better. Um, 
If there's going to be a bunch of mirrors, we probably need Field of Rune in the deck somewhere, which we've been struggling with mana a lot lately and been struggling with colors a lot lately, so I don't actually know how to fit the, the Field of Rune in unless I go up to 26 land, maybe? Um, but there's things to think about for later. Anyway, that's going to be it for me tonight. We're going to go look for somebody to host real quick. If you guys did not see my Google pop up. That was not me loading up Twitch to see who's online to host. I promise. You didn't see it at all. I appreciate you guys stopping by for this very early morning stream on Wednesday. Um, probably be back on Thursday. Not 100% sure we'll be back on Thursday. Spoiler. We'll be back every day. All right. So it looks like Z Magic's actually playing standard today, so we can host him. Sure, hit us up. Hit us up, Flame Guts. We'll answer them questions and then we'll send this host on over. Would you say the horse would be better than the cat? Um. It's better versus some decks than the cat, but, oh no, sorry, this was the latest build. The, uh, the entire reason that, like, when I put this deck together was to try to beat the mono red decks that were everywhere. Um, I don't think the horse or the cat's particularly very good. We actually don't have a whole lot of ways to gain life in the deck. There's only uh, these 11 ways to gain life if you cut them, and like the next build of this deck I'm going to build is going to shave on some Legion landings. Like four of them have felt like overkill. So if only three ways to gain life, I don't think the horse is enough. Like if I was going to play the horse, I feel like I would want Ephra Spear Harvesters and maybe the Sun Scourgers back into the main deck. So like there could be a build out there that the horse would be better than Cat. It's just not the build I'm playing. It's not to build with, like, these oddball black cards. Um, maybe... The, what's the Bantu God do? I think you played the Bantu God, right? So we gain a life there, so, like, that makes the cat a little bit better. These make the cat... Or, sorry, that makes the horse a little bit better. These make the horse a little bit better. So, like, there's probably a build out there that makes the horse better. Uh, just not, Just not the build I'm playing. Um, the, the, the one thing that I want to try, I don't know if you've saw this, or I don't know if anybody saw this, but I'll pull it up. The one thing that I want to try next, I believe, is, where's it at? Abazan Tokens, here we go. Is a build like this that's got some Varaskas in it. I feel like these Varaskas are very good. I don't think I want to play this particular build of it. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of start to finish, but I like the idea of Abzan tokens in general. Maybe something closer to this one. Uh, so what about Silent Trigger? I, I recognize Silent Trigger as being a good player. But I, I think Varaska is a very good card, and I think it works very well in this deck. I'm not sure which of these builds I would try. I probably, you know, like, just still want to, like, make my own tunes, but, like, Splashing for Varaska is the next thing I want to try. Because I felt like I felt like I've got to a lot of mid games and been even in the game and I needed a way to close and like Planeswalkers feel like they're the best way to close, but without Gideon in the format, I feel like we need a you know, without sorry, without Gideon out of Zendikar in the format, I feel like we need some kind of other token producer. And this one doubles as a removal spell, which is something that I felt I've needed. Like, uh, there's been a few problematic creatures that come down. It has just a massive amount of loyalty, too. And, like, the, uh, it's got an ultimate that can easily win the game when the boards are being stalled. Um, I like the idea of this card. I like the idea that you gave, too, with the Bantu's gods. Um, I don't know if I'm a fan of Oketcha. I actually didn't know Oketcha had double strike. I'm pretty sure I have stone-cheated people on paper by not taking double the damage when I've been attacked by that. I did not know that had double strike. My cards are not English. 
my paper cards are not English. I have learned something today. Anyway, so yeah, the, the horses could definitely be better in a different build of the deck. Uh, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with this deck right now. The uh, I've been on approach for the last three streams, been working on the approach, and I think I'm actually going to go back to Sultai Energy and see if we can tune it to more of my liking for the next stream. Yeah, she, she doesn't seem that good to me. She seems just really, really slow. Um, I'm usually tied up mana-wise, but we'll probably... This this is just the Andrew Jessup's build. This isn't my build, but this is probably what we're going to work on for the next stream. Uh, it seems to be very popular right now, and like a lot of people are having more success than I had with it. And my five-game sample size didn't feel particularly good, so like I feel like I owe it a larger sample size. Um... I think having the fourth defense in the main over the fourth spell pierce is actually a pretty big difference as well. I'm not real happy if the sideboard though. That's the one thing I can say is like I won all four negates. I feel like if our opponents just had four negates last game, like we 100% lose, but where we only had two, him not drawing one of the top 20 cards really isn't that unlucky. Like the negates just feel like they're better than the rest's hurt to me. But anyway, so I've babbled enough. One question. What about Dustadon? Um, Dustadon actually feels pretty good in this format. A lot of this format is a lot of like poopy green creatures. I say poopy green creatures, but I mean obviously like Winding Constrictor is not a bad card. Long Tusk isn't a bad card. I should have said dirtily green creatures. But the one problem with Dustadon is like this Sultai energy deck is exceptionally popular. And the Dustadon really does nothing versus the Glance, and it does nothing versus the Winding Constrictors, which, on its own right, is just what it is. But like when you add that to the fact that it's another dead card versus Blue White Approach, another fairly dead card, not completely, but fairly dead card versus Blue Black Control, and another fairly deadish card versus Mono Red, like probably means it's at best a cyborg card and if it's at best a cyborg card i think fumigate's just better uh, it also doesn't kill hostage taker which is quickly becoming like the best creature in standard besides scarab god these two are like <laughs> like the bestest of friends and probably number one and number two is best creatures in standard right now um worlds will be this weekend and there'll be pro hopefully there'll be some innovation from the great minds from like Team Eureka and like Brad Nelson and them. Um, this format feels feels pretty good. It feels like it's actually changing pretty fast too. But yep, yeah, uh, take care everybody. I hope I answered what questions I could answer without sounding like a fool. Take care, Flame Guts. Take care, everybody else. Thanks for stopping by.